Right, well, in triathlon, there are a lot of triathlon couples, and probably one of the most well-known and most successful are these two, Heather and Trevor Wertel, who very kindly joined me today. Now, I want to get a little bit behind the scenes of how you guys train, but also, you know, how it works as a couple. And going back to the beginning, I gather you were together before you did triathlon. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Uh, we've actually known each other since 1995. We were chemistry 11 partners in high school. Uh, so we've known each other for ages, m more of our lives than we haven't. Um, but we, we weren't involved romantically or anything. We were just buds. We hung out a lot in high school and stuff. Uh, and then we got together again when I was doing my master's at the University of Victoria, and he was also there. Uh, and just, yeah, just started hanging out. And uh, then it kind of blossomed into... A relationship. And so, Joe, when did triathlon start after the relationship? On how? Who, who's, whose idea was it? Yeah, we were involved in adventure racing and just kind of endurance sports just for fun. Um, but we, I think I wanted to try a triathlon, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted, yeah, I didn't know how to swim. So, Heather taught me how to swim, and then we both did our first I'm, triathlon. I'm to blame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could have given me some better tips early on. Darn it! Now, 2004. So we did both did our first triathlon. 2004, um, 2005. We did a couple. Heather, I don't maybe didn't even do any in 2005. She was more focused on doing her PhD. Um, and then 2006, we kind of just were like, okay, um, let's see what we can do and train a little bit harder. And um, that was the year we got married. And um, both qualified for the yeah, world we both champs in Kona. both qualified for the world champs in Kona and kind of got married a few weeks before that, which is the whole worst <laughs> preparation for an Ironman ever. Well, Volcano is a nice place for honeymoon. <laughs> so when did you turn pro? And did you turn pro at the same time or did one of you make that move before the other? Yeah, turning pro was a few years later. Um, we just you know, got better and better at training and, and putting more focus into into the training aspect. And Heather turned, did her first pro race early 2008. I think I may have squeaked into a pro race in 2008, but I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> um, I just turned up at the start line and, and or not the start them. line, at, at the registration with Heather. She registered as a pro and they just assumed I was a pro too. So they, they threw me in the pro ranks and that's how I... <laughs> did my first pro race anyway <laughs> but then the next year i raced full-time pro so 2008 we were both racing in the pro elite ranks and end of 2008 was when we decided now oh, let's just see what we can do we'll commit and i think a lot of people um age groupers are curious as to you know how pros make a living as it is but then when you're both doing it does that add extra pressure and how do you cope with that the, with the pressure of of using triathlon as your only income as a couple right so that for us was the was the big the crux of the whole deal um I won actually Ironman Coeur d'Alene in 2008 as when I was still working full time and we sort of thought, well, we have to go for it. You know, if we're doing well, doing it full time, we just have to make the jump. But the big thing was we sold our condo, um, had an exit plan for our real jobs and bought this. We got this 23 foot RV off of Repo Depot, like on auction for a good deal. And we knew that to make it work, we didn't want to be super stressed about money. So we had a little bit of savings and then the big expenses were flights and accommodation, uh, like travel traces. But if we had it all in a mobile home, then we could just drive because there was a, enough racing on the West Coast of North America that we could hit the events. And so that was the thing, not having mortgage, not having real expenses. And so we just lived very cheaply in this RV for about five and a half years and we got to see a lot of cool communities and some really neat parts of the of the states in Canada so um, yeah we just kept living that lifestyle. I mean people will think yeah, it's intense doing the same sport together but living in an RV together. Yeah when uh, you're both over six feet tall and it's really small yeah, too. It's, really, it's a little it's really physically yeah. but also you know that that intensity. How do you guys sort of switch off Trevor? How do you how do you switch off from triathlon or you know if one of you's had a good day one of you's had a bad day how does that work? Yeah, I'm mean, being in an RV together. I mean, you definitely have to be compatible, and I think <laughs> you find that out pretty quick. And, and we really are. Uh, we just kind of rolled with it, um, trained together as much as we could, and traveled to the races. And we had similar goals, and that was kind of all we were focused on. Well, you've touched on that there with them. Um, you know, train together. Do you have the same coach? Did you have the same coach? Do you coach each other? How does that work? Yeah, since it's 2011, we had the same coach. Um, I'm not working with him this year. Heather still is. Um, so we had very similar training sessions, um, as far as intervals and duration and things like that. Um, swimming, we're pretty comparable in the, in the water, um, riding, um, it's, it's really easy to, to ride with someone else. I mean, they can be on your wheel if it's not, if they're not keeping up and, 
um, intervals and things like that. Running together, well, you can running, talk about. Yeah, I don't know why, but running is the one time we annoy each other a little bit in training. Like, just, it'll be like, get away from me. Like, we just, I don't know, just different, slightly different cadence or d often a sense of like, if you're really tired and cranky, I feel like I'm working hard and he's just is too easy. Yeah. And so you just kind of get yeah, frustrated yeah. in that, like the comparisons, which are silly, but yeah. so it's good sometimes to just yeah. do your separate things. Yeah. So now can you give us a, an insight into, and I know it's hard for a typical day, but in your sort of a big block of training, a typical training day, including when you eat and when you get up and, and how that interacts with each other. Can you choose a, choose a training day and sort of talk us through it? Yeah, we're not, Early risers. Uh, we both love to sleep. I like and, to hear that. There's yeah. so many traffic. So like, get up so early, and but yeah. then I guess you know, age groupers, we have to. But yeah, you've got the I mean, yeah, it's the luxury to sleep in, and we definitely take full advantage of yeah. that. So, <laughs> um, so you're compatible. But at the same time, though, when we we don't like to get out of bed too late because I mean, the day does disappear. So, I mean, ideally, we're out of bed by eight or eight thirty. Um, oh, take our time for <laughs> for breakfast and. It doesn't, it's not really worth going to the pool before 9.30. Um, we're at our home pool anyway, because the public lanes, um, there are, they're very busy before 9.30. So at, if we get there at 9.30, we generally have a lane to ourselves. So um, that works well for us. Um, yeah, and then after that, we usually grab some food. And is someone um, in charge of food on you? How does that work? So we have a, a really nice, we have a really nice espresso machine at home and he is a fantastic coffee maker. So that's his jam. He's like oh. measuring the stuff, getting the grind, fineness, doing all that. Wow. Yeah. So that's, it's pretty deluxe. And then I'm sort of more, we'll usually just do our own meals or if it's like a bigger breakfast, I'll, I'll rock that out because he's making the coffees and. And then if we've got two more sessions that day, we try and knock those off before dinner. So um, we'll head out on a bike, um, f fuel normally on the bike, and maybe a quick snack off the bike before a run, or, or sometimes we run right off the bike. And then into a big dinner. And and who cooks that? Um, we trade off. I mean, Heather's got better ideas. She's way more creative. <laughs> when I open the fridge, I'm like, eh, I don't know. She's we'll always see. like, we have nothing to eat. And I'm like, yeah, we have lots of things. You just mix those things. <laughs> but no, but we, he's good at cooking too. We definitely like if someone is just feeling more tired or had a slightly harder intervals or whatever, then we, we take turns with letting the other person have the legs up. But we're, we're pretty good at just like oh, you wash up or I'll cook or whatever. So it's pretty easy that way. And that um, leads me on to my next question, actually, of how do you guys recover? And, you know, quite often if you're one of you is an athlete and the other person's not in a relationship, then the person who's the athlete puts their feet up a bit more. Or when you're traveling, they might carry your bags and things like that. But, you know, both of you guys want to look after your legs and your body. How do you, how do you optimize your recovery and help each other in that situation? Yeah, we basically just... Um, it might not be ideal, I guess, in terms of other people that have that support person that's doing them all that all for them. But we just do it ourselves, you know, like you're packing your own bike or lugging your own stuff through the hotel. And that's just the way it goes. And I, I like that, actually. I mean, uh, I like being personally responsible for my own equipment. I like knowing how to put together my bike, how all the stuff works. And um, and I think for us, because it's just normal life, we don't feel like beholden upon someone else to take care of us or you know, you don't sort of feel like, oh, I need all this extra stuff at a race. It's like, it's just life. You just yeah. do your thing. And um, and I don't think either of us could or be really comfortable asking the other person to take care of us so much because, you know, like, well, yeah. you just got to do your own thing. And Trevor, do you guys share any, do you, like, you share that you've always got the same bike. Do you share other sponsors and how does that work? Do you guys market yourselves as a, as a team? Yeah, we've always tried to market ourselves as a team. I mean, right from the get-go, um, even in 2009 when we first started picking up our, our initial sponsors um yeah we tried to get the same ones and and not have the conflicting you know items because it's it's hard when you're like taking a picture out on the out training or something it's like okay well we're going to show your bike this time or we'll show your running shoes or well you have like a that. joint yeah. instagram account yeah. yeah yeah how does that work does one of you in charge like if i message team worth who am i talking to <laughs> oh that's actually one of the great mysteries is <laughs> it's people often don't know who it is and it's kind of funny because we have very similar sense of humor people often can't tell who it is and it might be either of us who just like responds on our social media account but we definitely like it and it's a lot easier for us to to do something that feels a bit more real and relatable 
as a team, you know, instead of having our separate ones. And then talking of the sharing, how do you work out your race season and your calendar? Like, do you, all, do you always do the same races? And there must be some races that play into your strengths more than yours yeah. and vice versa. And how do you manage that? Uh, we definitely prefer to do the same races uh, just in terms of training and in terms of levels of crankiness. It's better if we're on the same page, actually. Um, but of course, like Ironman Canada this year, for instance, is a men's professional only race. So Trevor's training for that one. And I'm probably going to stick to a half distance race um, focusing on 70.3 worlds. So, yeah, our schedules diverge a little bit in the fall. Um, but yeah, we we but just pick the races we want to do, you know, individually and then sort of work on like, oh yeah, we can go to that one together and how we're going to support each other's training for them, yeah. And um, Trevor, any tips to, you know, probably more age groupers of how if they're both doing a triathlon or triathlons, how they can support each other and just anything that you guys have learned that you think you wish you knew before when you went into triathlon together. I yeah, I mean if you're if you're both doing the same race, um, yeah, I mean, it can, it can be stressful going into a race. I mean, I think just trying to, trying to keep it fun. Um, we definitely, I mean, it's a very serious sport for us. I mean, it's our job, but we don't let it get to the point where it, it gets crazy. Um, so, you know, especially if you're doing it for fun as an amateur, I think you just have to realize that you're doing it for fun and, don't take it too seriously. Um, enjoy, enjoy it together and, um, yeah, help each other out when you're out on the course. I mean, I enjoy seeing Heather and hopefully she's in the lead when she's coming the other way. I always look forward to that. Um, and then when I'm done, I, I always try and get to somewhere on the course where I can cheer her the last, uh, couple K of the race. And, um, Heather, also for you, like when you are occasionally doing, not doing the same race and you get to support, any tips to, to someone who's watching this who's a, as, a, as a supporter and their, their partner does triathlon? Any tips for them how to support yeah. well? Yeah, I mean, I know when I've watched Trevor, especially do a full Ironman, I am just so exhausted from that <laughs> because you're 100% emotionally invested, but you have zero control over anything, right? Yeah. And so it's just like stress all day. I'm like, where is he? Uh, should You've I just get to this point uh, and that point? Yeah, so just take care of yourself actually like hydrate <laughs> eat throughout the day i've just Train been so destroyed day. after like spectating more than i almost have from racing wow. so yeah and um it's good to have the conversation like what works for you for me to cheer like i know we both don't like um sort of fake cheers like don't say oh you're doing great if i'm like i'm not doing great you know so just kind of working out that those things that like what is really helpful for me to say to you on the course like so you're not like annoying the person that all you're trying to do is help out on the race course yeah. that makes good sense cool right finally any last tips that you you think people can learn from you guys have generally for triathlon uh yeah maybe one as a couple um we find if ever we're getting angry um, for totally no reason at all. It's definitely has to do with calorie intake. So just eat some food and hopefully everything will be all right. Food makes everything better. Yeah. I'm definitely with you on that one. Well, awesome guys. Thank you so much. Some really interesting insight into how you guys train and work and really cool stuff. So thank you yeah, very much. Thanks for having us. And if you haven't yet done so, you can subscribe. Just hit the globe for that. And if you want to watch more triathlon travel tips, click up here. And if you want to learn about nailing a triathlon beach exit, click here.